Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, today, 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 as we sit right now, 45 days, 7 hours, 7 minutes, and 30 seconds away from kickoff of the 2022 season. And in fact, today, the Dallas Cowboys charter is headed for Oxnard. Now, here's the funny thing about training camp. You know, we all get so excited because you know, tomorrow should be the opening press conference. and Wednesday, they'll be out on the field. Here's the reality, though. The first couple of days of practice, we, we talk about practice, is actually kind of anticlimactic because basically there's no pads until August 1st. That's when things really start picking up. Really, the first few days are, you know, getting your physical tomorrow, getting, you know, used to your equipment and your, you know, where you're staying and everything else and getting into the grind, meetings and everything else, and then walkthroughs. You know, they, I mean, they'll be, you know, they'll, they'll walk through and they'll do some running around the field. But the real meat of practice doesn't really start till next week, a week from today. Um, I will miss that Monday practice, which is the first padded practice, but I'll be there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Can't wait. Law Nation will be in town. Uh, I think he gets in on the first as well. I know uh, West Coast plans on being practice on Wednesday, and I think Bosch comes in on the 5th. So, you know, hopefully we'll get together with everybody, and we'll definitely get the looks and stuff of training camp. But one of the things, you know, as we are getting closer and closer and, and just waiting for this thing to finally kick off, I, I'm going to take, I take offense to everybody that talks about Lyle Collins, who currently is on the pup list. Now, he can come off a pup list anytime during training camp. If he's on the pup list to start the season, then that means he's going to be out for four games. Be that as it may, the fact that he's starting off the off season, excuse me, the training camp on the pup list has to be discourage, discouraging if you are the Cincinnati Bengals, knowing that's how it started for us two years ago when he missed the whole season with hip issues. Now, for all those talking heads out there that have been saying that the Dallas Cowboys, you know, that the, you know, they lost Lyle Collins and, you know, it's that they haven't really done their homework because – I don't know that Lyle Collins is definitely better than Terrence Steele. And here's where I have the numbers to back it up. I don't like to just come through and just give you some stuff and say there's nothing I have. I don't have anything behind it to back it up. But here's the thing about offensive linemen. When offensive linemen are doing their job, you don't hear about them. You don't know about them. You don't think about them. We know about Connor Williams because we kept seeing all the penalty flags. We kept seeing him lifted up and dropped off in the lap of Dak Prescott. You see that, like, you know, it's glaring at you. You know it's there. It's going on. We didn't have that with Terrence Steele. Now, now let's go through Let's go through the, the chain of events that actually happened. Going into the season, or excuse me, last season, people looked at Terrence Steele and said, man, I don't ever want to see that guy starting again. And, you know, truth be told, his rookie year was not a good one. But when you think that, he was a rookie undrafted free agent who didn't have a training camp um, or, excuse me, had a shortened training camp, didn't have OTAs other than book work, um, doesn't have a preseason, and now you're entered into the starting lineup. That, that's sink or swim. And I dare say a lot of people would have had a hard time with that. But through the offseason, he got stronger. He ended up working out with, you know, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but working out with the offensive lineman guru and doing things to get better. Lyle Collins got suspended the first five games of the season because of missing the drug test stuff. He always had something else to do, and he missed it, and finally it caught up to him. Um, enter Terrence Steele having to start week one. So from week one against Tampa Bay, against the Chargers, against the Eagles, against Carolina, the New York Giants, New England, and Minnesota, Terrence Steele was a starter. Now, Lyle Collins was eligible to come back um, sooner. He could have played in the Minnesota game. But the thing was is, uh, I'm sorry, not the Minnesota game, the Denver game. The thing was, he was playing, Lyle Collins was playing so good that um, 
he couldn't get on the field. Excuse me, not the Denver game, with the Minnesota game. He was eligible to return for the Minnesota game, I think it was. Basically, Terrence Steele was playing so good, we couldn't figure out who to start. And that was a good thing, that Terrence Steele held the position until Tyron Smith went down. And Lexa, let me, let me pull, pull this up because I want to make sure I get this right here. Okay. Let's look at this because this is an article from November 4th. The Dallas Cowboys were forced to take on the Tampa Bay um, Buccaneers without starting guard, Zach Martin, who sits on COVID reserve, blah, 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 blah. Um, and without starting offensive linemen for much of the long time period, Lyle Collins, the Cubs' definite starter at right tackle. He has been suspended for five games of the league's substance abuse policy. Sources tell CBS striking a massive blow to the offensive front line in Dallas. For a while, Martin will likely be on the field for week two against the Chargers. Collins' suspension could sideline him through week six. Collins can appeal, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so Lyle Collins, week one, can't play. Can't play for the first six games because of the suspension. Okay, let's go on to another article here. This is November 4th. Fans of teams spend an inordinate amount of time contemplating the what-ifs. Most recently, fans of the Dallas Cowboys have fired up their synapses in trying to figure out exactly how the club will be able to add the litany of players who have missed games over the first half of the season back to the 53-man roster. Having depth is a beautiful thing, and it certainly served the 6-1 Cowboys well in 2021. So keep in mind, we're 6-1. However, there's one true edict. When it comes to football, things have a way of working themselves out. There's no sense in trying to figure out which players may end up uh, released to make room for guys coming off IR or pup list because of time and situations call for it. There's bound to be a solution present. A similar occurrence is taking place now, and fans have wondered since Lyle returned from the five-game suspension what would happen uh, with right tackle Terrence Steele playing so well. See, again, Terrence Steele could have been kicked to the curb. But the Cowboys are like, we don't need to mess with this. We don't need to mess with this. Lyle Collins, you can sit. Um, what would happen at right tackle Terrence Hill playing so well? It took just one game and a half, really, for the solution to present itself. That happened when a high ankle sprain aggravated Tyron Smith. He'll miss at least week nine against the Denver Broncos. And with that, the only decision that's needed to make is which of the two starting caliber tackles would play left side. The answer, according to Dak Prescott, is Steele will move over to the right side. Okay. So, week nine, Denver, and half of the game before, we've got Terrence Steele now playing left tackle. Let's go to the statistics here. Here's what's interesting, okay? Okay. So what we have is the Minnesota Vikings game, half of that game, it ends up being Terrence Steele's taking over for Tyron Smith and the whole Denver Bronco game. So for a sample size, we've got Tampa Bay, L.A. Chargers, Eagles, Panthers, Giants, uh, New England. Now what I want you to look at here is this is where it's interesting. Um, let me slide this over a little further. Let's look at some of the statistics. This is the rushing yards right here. You see my, my, my piece right here. The rushing yards per game and the yard average. So for week one, uh, move it over one more. So we get Tampa Bay. So for week one, we've got Tampa Bay. Now the Cowboys didn't run a whole lot because it was a shootout. Um, they averaged 3.3. But Take a look at the Chargers, 198 yards, 6.4 yards a carry. Philadelphia Eagles, 160, 3.9. Carolina Panthers, 245 yards, 7.2. New York Giants, 201, 5.2. New England, 122, um, 3.9. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Halfway through the game against Minnesota, we won that game. We won that game. And keep in mind, before Lyle Collins was reinserted, we were 6-1. and one. That game, 
We rushed 78 yards. It's 3.3. Now, keep in mind, Dak didn't play in that game, too. Denver, we rushed for 78 yards, 4.9. But as you start looking at this, now, th- there are mitigating circumstances that go with this. Zeke ended up hurting himself um, after week four, you know, his uh, his uh, PCL. And uh, Tony Pollard also hurt themselves. But what you look at here is only two other games did you have over 125 yards against New Orleans and the Eagles who were resting people. You can dare say and look at the yardage per average, how much it went downhill once Lyle Collins came back to the starting lineup and Terrence Steele wasn't. It's direct correlation. You can look at that and say the Dallas Cowboys offensive line played their best football without Lyle Collins. That is a fact. And so when people say, oh, the Cowboys lost Lyle Collins, they're going to take a step back, and we're not sure about, uh, you know, uh, Terrence Steele. I'm not sure about Terrence Steele on the left side. But when he played on the right side, we didn't have a problem on the right side. So don't let them believe you that the offensive line is going to be in worse shape and that we're going to take a step back because Terrence Steele is the starter. That won't be, if there's an issue, that's not going to be the issue. The issue is, will Tyron Smith be able to hold up? How will Tyler Smith end up being? Those are the questions. I ain't got any questions on Terrence Steele. So happy Cowboys back to Oxnard Day. And I will be back with you guys a little bit later. I hope you have a great one. Peace.